The sit-up is a core exercise, primarily focusing on our abdominals and our hip flexors. Setup for this position or this exercise determines the difficulty of this exercise. So I'm gonna give you quite a few different options progressing you from easiest to toughest for this move. So you can adjust based on your ability level, make sure it's challenging, but make sure it's doable for you. So we're gonna get down on our back to our starting position here. Where our legs and our arms are positioned or being utilized in this exercise determines the difficulty level. The movement in the torso is gonna remain the same. It's only gonna be the legs and the arms that change to change the difficulty. So the movement in that torso is going to be pulling that belly button in towards the spine, rolling those shoulder blades and that head up off the ground, and then coming all the way up onto that tailbone while squeezing those abs. The descent is gonna be the exact opposite from these. We're not just gonna let ourselves go as we come back. We're gonna, again, pull that belly button in, that low back starts to touch the ground, and then we roll back on down. That way we're engaging those abdominals on the way up and on the way down. So now, the arm positioning, like I said, and the leg positioning is gonna affect your difficulty level. Easiest version of this move is gonna to be to where those legs are extended on out, about shoulder width, and those arms are up overhead. We're gonna utilize those arms slightly to help generate momentum. So they're gonna come extended up overhead, and then we're gonna kind of swing them forward as we bring that upper body up and reach on down towards those ankles. Again, controlling that movement back on down. So this is your easiest option for these. Remember, we're only utilizing those arms on this movement as much as needed. We always wanna focus on those abdominals so don't just swing those arms and generate all that momentum, only swing them as much as you need to. Pull with those abdominals because that's the focus of this exercise. A little tougher for this one is not using those arms for momentum, still leaving those legs extended though. Those arms are gonna be staying straight up overhead or straight up over our torso and we're gonna start that movement, pulling that belly button in, coming up, controlling it back down. But now I'm not using those arms at all for momentum. Tougher still, we're gonna bring those hands on down right outside the ears, and we're gonna keep them in this position as we come on up. So those are our three positionings that we can use for the arms to adjust the difficulty. Swinging them slightly, keeping them extended straight up overhead here, and then next to the ears. Positioning for the feet, is pretty much the closer the feet are to your butt, the diff more difficult it's gonna be. So extended on out is easiest, bringing them in to where those feet are together, legs are, um, knees are extended out wide, but those feet aren't super close to the butt is gonna be a little tougher. And then tough is still, bringing them in nice and close here. This is sometimes considered a frog sit up, to where those feet are together and those knees are spread apart. So you can use any combination of your foot positioning and the, up and the arm movement in this exercise to adjust the difficulty based on your ability level. I do want you to focus on progressing though. So every time you do it, try to progress to the next difficulty, whether it's extending the leg slightly or whether it's trying to eliminate that arm motion. Most common mistakes on this exercise, there are quite a few. Biggest one I would say is leading the movement with the head and neck and using those hands to kind of pull on the head. So whenever I tell you to get in your hand positioning for your sit up, I always want those hands and those fingertips resting nice and lightly on the head, just outside the ears. I don't want them interlaced back behind the head. What this is gonna do when they're interlaced behind the head, especially as you tire out, it's gonna really tempt you to kind of pull on that head and neck to kind of get up in that setup, We don't wanna do that. We wanna initiate the movement with the abs. Whenever they can't do that anymore, they're gonna need a rest break. It doesn't mean we power through by engaging our neck and our head in this movement. So that movement is begun by contracting those abs, pulling that upper body up. It's not done by leading with the chin and pushing on the back of the head with those hands. So that's the most common mistake. The next most common mistake on this exercise is not engaging the abs on our descent, on that downward motion. So a lot of times I'll see people come on up and then I'll just see them kind of, just kind of flop back 
like this down onto the ground, the movements that we perform for many of our ab exercises are gonna focus on control. You'll get a lot better results if you focus on control and engaging your abs versus focusing on speed and cheating through the movement. So really focus, squeeze, pull on up, control yourself down, roll on up, lower back hits first, roll on down, getting that stretch in the abs at the bottom. 